Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week, showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI again, and I just want to do a little thing on color here. And that's because um, just like in Luminar 4, one of, in my opinion, one of the most outstanding features of Luminar AI is that you can control color so well and do so much with it and have such an impact on it. And being a guy that loves color, I'm obviously just naturally kind of err in that direction. So I thought I'd do a quick video here showing you about kind of how I edit for color and in particular focused on the color harmony tool. Um, let me show you that. So I'm on the professional tab. I've done nothing to this photo. So if I hit the reset, there's nothing happening because that's the photo. The only thing I've done is crop it 16 by nine. But other than that, no edits to the photo. I'm gonna get into color harmony over here on the pro tab. And if I click on that, you can see you have multiple sections. Now, um, truthfully, when you open it, it will open like that. But you've got brilliance and warmth, and then you've got color contrast, split color warmth, and one of my favorites, color balance. So color harmony gives you massive control over the colors. So brilliance and warmth, as the name implies, you can increase the brilliance, which to me is kind of a little bit like vibrance. It's making the colors kind of pop a little bit. And here, being a sunset, I want to add some warmth, so I'll drag that to the right. Whereas if I go to the left, you'll see it gets really blue, which actually looks kind of cool in its own way. But um, I'm going to go to the right, go a little warmer there. And uh, then I'm going to use color contrast. I'm, in fact, going to use all four of these in this quick demo. Color contrast, basically, as the name implies, it will create contrast between uh, two colors. And so the contrast is one color will get lighter and one color will get darker. So um, you have to drag the amount before the hue slider will turn on, but it's set on red, which is like the, obviously the warmer tones. So if I drag this to the right, look what's happening to the warmer tones. I don't know if you can tell. The warmer tones basically uh, kind of get um, a little bit lighter, but the opposite of that, which would be the cooler tones, get darker. So what happens is uh, whichever hue you choose, that hue basically gets a little bit brighter and the opposite on the color spectrum gets darker. So here, the opposite of this warm is the cool or the blues and they're getting darker as you can see, right? So now I'm just going to put that at 100 just to show you the difference. If I go over here to the blues, that looks terrible, of course, because what happened was the blues got totally blown out because they got brighter and the warm colors got darker. So um, it works well on some photos. It's not something I would use every time, but in this case, I can do this because I've got a nice little pop of blues and I kind of want to darken those because I'm creating overall a little bit of contrast in the photo between the colors, so that's helping me. Next up, split color warmth. You have warm and cool, and basically you can increase or decrease the warmer or cooler colors. So in this case, I want to bump up the warmer colors, and um, I actually might take the cooler colors a little bit less. No, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave the cooler one because I'm going to show you something else here in a second. So I basically just bumped up the warmer colors, and if I go like that, you can see it gets pretty over the top, just like with any sliders in any program. Be careful how far you go just because... You know, when you're stacking color edit on color edit on color edit, etc., you can really get a really kind of cartoonish, you know, uh, what, what I used to call clown vomit, right? Like every color is super saturated. So just be careful. Uh, and then I get into highlights. Uh, excuse me. I get into color balance, one of my favorites. But what it does, if you click on this menu, you have shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you just click on one of those, and you have the ability to, to choose a, a color for the specific shadow. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a little bit more blue. And so I'm gonna drag the yellow blue away from yellow towards blue. So if I go like that, it's gonna get really dark and moody. I don't wanna do that much. I just wanna do a subtle little bump, maybe something like that. And that's why up here I said I didn't wanna drag the cool colors to the cooler because I'm basically doing a very similar thing here with the shadows. But the shadows, um, if, you, if I reset that to zero, the shadows are basically, of course, the darker areas. The darker areas are, um, of course, those, uh, the rocks that you see, but also the clouds that are already kind of blue. So I'm just creating a little bit more blue in them, which again, creates a little bit more contrast. The, dark, the blues are darker, and that's gonna create a little contrast where the warm tones are lighter. Speaking of warm tones, I'm going to skip midtones. I'm going to go straight to highlights, and I'm just going to add some red and some magenta into the highlights. And you can see even those subtle little additions I've done. I mean, 
I did a lot on color contrast, but if I turn that off and you look at it, it just flattens out the image a little bit. It doesn't really impact the color as much as it impacts the contrast of the color, hence the name. So I'm gonna pull that back. I think it was at 45, but if you look, I mean, I did 32 on brilliance, but 15 here, 12 there on the highlights and the shadows, I think I did, yeah, 10. So pretty minor. And despite all that, we've got a very colorful image really pop in here, I think. So if I show you the before, there it is before and there it is after. Now keep in mind, I've done nothing else to the photo that I would often do to accentuate colors. Those things include using the light tool, using golden hour, using split toning, things like that. All I've done is color harmony and that took me from a photo that actually in real life was, was quite beautiful, but the color was fairly lost and flat and there you go, there it is, much more vibrant and now you could come in and do lots of things. Like in the light tool, I might say, pull down the highlights. Whoa, I'm sorry, that's exposure. Uh, I knew that looked wrong. Uh, let me get the highlights this time. Pull down the highlights and that center section here, the photo, I think looks a little bit better having done that and maybe a tiny bit of smart contrast. Again, you edit to your heart's content, do whatever you like. All my uh, point here was, I didn't do anything else with temperature or tint. I didn't do anything with color. I didn't do anything with um, golden hour over there. All I did for color was right here in color harmony and it was super impactful on the photo. So just wanted to share that. That's a wonderful tool. It was in Luminar 4. It's also here in Luminar AI. I think you're going to love it and be able to use it on a lot of photos in a lot of different ways. And I'll come back more and probably do some deep dives on this in the future. But I just wanted to show you the amount of color pop you can have even with small, subtle adjustments across all four of these aspects of color harmony. You can go from that photo to that photo. Quick, easy, fun, powerful, all that kind of stuff. That's Luminar AI for you. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you really soon. I'll be back with more videos. Take care of yourselves out there and adios.